Uh, this is a presentation on uh, plant collections in the field and also plant pressing to uh, produce herbarium uh, mounts that we will keep in our herbarium. Um, a little bit of history on plant collections. Uh, it goes back uh, literally thousands of years and um, in fact it was the plants themselves that um, got humans to change over from a hunter-gatherer society to a um, agricultural society and it was when they discovered grains, uh, food grains like uh, corn, wheat, um, barley, things like this which kept them from traveling around and they settled down in communities. So we've been collecting plants for literally millennia. Um, the, uh, some of the most famous collectors I guess were the nat early naturalists that went around the world um, Darwin for one, I've seen some of Darwin's own plant collections and some of his animal collections that he made on his five-year trip around the world. Um, Captain Cook, when he was old, his age of discovery, collected plants and brought them back. And um, they have uh, been around for literally hundreds of years in their, in their actual form. This is a example of an herbarium mount. Um, it is put out by a biological supply house. and. Um, Basically, we have a plant that is mounted on specific non-acid-free uh, uh, herbarium paper with a label down in the lower right-hand corner that gives uh, information and so forth that we need on this plant. Um, this was ordered from, it's what we call a commercial mount because it was ordered from a biological supply house. And these are a couple of examples of students' work which are almost exactly the same. So this is what you're going to be doing when you collect plants um, in uh, Bio 1010 Botany Lab. Um, this was done um, about uh, two semesters ago by a um, student, and uh, it's almost exactly like a commercial mount. So this is the mount that we're going to be making eventually. What we're going to be doing in this presentation is just basically talking about um, plant collections in the field how we do it. We're not going to actually be going out and cutting plants because I've done some examples of that for you. But basically when you go out and collect plants, no matter whether you're uh, in forest plains or in your backyard or whatever, you're going to need, and this is, might be a little bit overkill, but you're going to need a plastic bag. And this is what you're going to put your collection in. Um, you go ahead and take a sample of a plant like this happens to be a red oak. You will wrap it in newspaper, put it in your bag, and put some moisture on it. Some water on the newspaper. Keep it moist. Okay? By keeping it moist, it leaves it pliable and usable, even for up to a couple of days. If you take this sample, throw it in the trunk of your car, and leave it there for a couple of days, it's going to be brittle and worthless. So always make sure that you keep your plants moist. Now comes to the pressing. This is what we call a plant press. This is a commercial press also that was ordered for, from a biological supply house. Um, it has slats on it which allows aeration, air to get into the plant and help dry it out. There is a strap that goes with it which I'll show you how to use here momentarily to press the plant and help get the moisture out so that we can preserve the specimen. You can make these out of plywood. Um, to aerate the plant, you can drill holes in a piece of plywood, put them together with a belt or Velcro or something like that and make your own plant press. But in this situation, we have a commercial press. All right. Now, other components of a plant press. What we're trying to do with a plant press is reduce as much moisture in the plant as possible. A dry plant will be preserved. A wet plant will rot, to be perfectly honest with you. So we're trying to dry it out as evenly and as quickly as possible. The first thing we do when we start to build a plant press with the numbers of plants, we will take a piece of cardboard. You can use an old cardboard box. Here again, all of these things are commercially available to us. That is the first thing that you put into a plant press, is a piece of cardboard. A cardboard is nothing more than distributing the pressure evenly across the plant. 
when you distribute the pressure, you get pretty much equal drawing. drawing. Um, an ex a kind of an example of, of distributing pressure and weight and so forth, it's a saddle on a horse. If you ride a horse without a saddle, you're going to put all of your weight on one point on that spine and you're going to end up with a swayback horse. You put a saddle on a horse, you're going to distribute your weight and pressure over the whole back of the horse. So before you don't have as much problems. That's what we're doing with the, with the uh, cardboard. Second thing that we put on is a blotter. This blotter is like an old ink blotter. It is very, very porous, very soft, and it and the newspaper that we're going to be using absorbs most of the moisture out of the plant when we press it. So we put a, we've got one half of the uh, plant press, we've got a cardboard, and we've got a blotter. Now, if you, when you are pressing your plants, you do not write on the cardboard or the blotter. I'll show you what you write on here in just a second. These are kept clean because we're going to use these over and over and over again. <clears throat> the more we use these blotters, the more absorbent they are. So if they've been used three or four times, they're in better shape than when they're brand new. So that's why we don't want any writing or anything over them. We want to keep them in as good condition as possible because we will be using these for literally years. The next thing that we do is to take a piece of newspaper. This happens to be the Washington Post a couple of days ago. It doesn't matter if it hangs over the edge of the press, but we have a piece of newspaper here, and this is what we put our plant in. Now, the plant, in this case, extends a little bit over the length of the, the uh, press itself. You take your pruning shears, which hopefully you have used to collect your plants, and you just snip off a little bit of the base. Try to center your plant inside the press itself. Like I said, you're going to extend a little bit over. Any information that you have on this plant, you will write up here in the margins of the newspaper where you found it. If you don't know the name of the plant, write some description of it, where you found it and the date that you found it. You can then look at field guides and so forth and determine the actual name of the plant at a later time. But you need at least that information on where you found it and when you found it written into the margin of the newspaper. Now, when you place a plant in the press, we're looking for a couple of things. We're going to try to flatten this out as much as possible and reduce the water amount in it. Okay? Most of the leaves will be face up, but you want at least one, maybe two leaves upside down. In other words, looking at the bottom of the leaf when you press this. There's a reason for this. We're going to go back and look at these herbarium specimens at a later date, and we can tell a lot about a plant by looking at the underside of the leaf. For example, this happens to be a red oak. Some of the characteristics of a red oak, it's got pointed lobes, which most of a lot of you have seen. At the end of each one of the lobes, it's a little hair-like structure. Well, you can see that from the top or the bottom. There are a lot of other plants that have these same characteristics, but a red oak if you look at the underside of a leaf, right in the angle of the vein underneath is some little fuzzy hairs. No other oaks have this characteristic. So by turning the leaf over and looking at the underside, we'll be able to determine plant species and characteristics that are similar to oak species. So we want at least one or two of the leaves turned upside down so that we can look at the bottom. Hold this as flat as possible Close the newspaper over and press down. We then add another blotter. Now basically what we have here is a sandwich. We've got two blotters, newspaper in between, the plant in between. The majority of the absorption is going to take place in the newspaper and the blotters. Okay. Now, we then put another stiffening piece of cardboard on. So we're building a plant press. 
Now, if this was the only plant that we would press, we would then take the other side of the wooden press, put it up here, put the strap on, and tighten it up. But if we're going to do more than one plant, we then take another blotter, put it here, okay? Take another piece of newspaper, another plant, this happens to be a dogwood, okay? You can arrange the dogwood on here. Now we want one leaf upside down, remember. So we'll take at least one leaf twist it around so that we can see the bottom of the leaf, fold the other newspaper over, put a blotter on. Another stiffening piece of cardboard. And let's say that's the only two plants that we're pressing now. We now take the other half of the press and we've got it sandwiched together with two plants with very absorbent material on either side of them to absorb the moisture. Now, take your strap. I always like to leave the ribs, the outer linear ribs on the plant outside so that the strap fits down in between and doesn't slide around. Put it right over the top. There are a lot of different straps. This one happens to have an alligator clip on it. Very easy to use. Holding the strap down here, we pull it as tight as possible. Now, we have got a plant press with two plants in it ready for desiccation or drying the plants out. Depending on the plant itself, we have to maybe wait a few days if they're very small plants. If they're larger, thicker plants um, uh, with a lot of moisture in them, it might take a week or so. But periodically, every day or every other day, you should come in and check the tension on this strap. If it is loose, which it will be, tighten it up again. What we're doing is we're losing moisture in the plants. As we lose the moisture, the, the press will not be as tight, so you have to continually tighten it up. By leaving this in for anywhere from a few days to a week or so, we have the um, plant press and the plants all ready for mounting, which we will go over in a subsequent presentation.